What are your night shift horror stories? Was an orderly in a hospital. Two of us were sitting in the basement office adjacent to the morgue. A guy passed our office, looking at us a little shifty, came back again and asked if we had access to the morgue. We said yes, thinking he was doing a pickup for a funeral home. But that seemed strange given it was around 12 o'clock to 12.30 a.m. Nope. He wanted to pay us to let him in and leave him alone with the bodies for an hour. We escorted him up to security. Apparently he had tried it in the past as security knew him. Was walking through the simulation lab for nursing students at the hospital I work at on very little sleep. All the lights were off and it was my first time working night shift. Turned a corner and saw what I thought was a person standing behind a lamp that was on. Turns out it was a mannequin holding the pull cord. Really freaked me out and I was awake after that. Worked a parking garage at the airport. Cleaning the top deck and noticed about a hundred ravens all over a truck with a tarp over the bed. Took my flashlight expecting something awful. Noticed as I got closer the smell and the ravens taking turns going in a hole they had torn open and popping out covered in gunk. Some guy left a broke down beater with a couple animal carcasses in the back to rot. No heads. Checked the logs and the damn truck had been there since November and it was April. So everything was just thawing and breaking down. Worked as an evening manager at a major Hilton property. Got a complaint from a bunch of guests about the noise coming from one of the rooms. Turns out, a drunken man was beating the id out of his wife and had the door barricaded so we couldn't get in. I called the cops. And they had to get into the room using the balcony from the room next room over. I'm still traumatized by what I saw when they finally arrested him and got the wife out of the room. She was covered in blood. It was horrifying. Used to work night shift at a 24 hour Walmart. Customers are nuts enough in the daytime. But they become weird after midnight. Once had an elderly guy come in wearing only a Jean jacket and fishnet stockings. He came up to my register. Leaned in. And asked if we carried anything to get rid of lice. Those plastic barriers all stores have now to protect cashiers. They need to keep those even after the pandemic ends. I lost count of the times customers got into my personal space to ask about products for fleas, lice, rashes, etc. Warning. Medical growth stuffing coming. I worked in an emergency room. The worst night that comes to mind involves a patient that was bitten by a baby timber rattlesnake. He was bleeding out of every single orifice by the time he got to us. More blood than I'd ever seen before outside of a motorcycle versus 75 mph head first to asphalt. I don't remember how many doses of Crawford we gave him. But it was the hospital's entire supply. But trying to get him stabilized. Arranging the helicopter transport to a bigger and better equipped facility. All the blood. Those weren't the worst parts. The worst part was when the patient lost control of his bowels. I will never, ever, forget that smell. I spent the entire time standing by the door with a battery powered fan and a handful of gauze pad saturated with cinnamon oil trying to reduce some of the smell. The doctor occasionally stuck her head out just so I could waft the cinnamon oil in her face. Yes, by some miracle, the patient did end up surviving. And as far as I know he made a full recovery, but the blood, the smell, and just the shock of it all, yeah. Never underestimate a baby timber rattlesnake. It was 3am. Popular Canadian coffee shop. There is one old baker in the back that rarely interacts with me past a dirty joke or a dirtier ditty from his navy days. Other than that I'm alone. Not another soul around the area and I expected to remain so for at least an hour yet. I'm boxing up the day olds for the homeless shelter when I swear I see something out of the corner of my eye. It's behind me. I turn. Then look down. There's a small child standing there. A native little toddler with a fur hawk staring at me intensely. I'm struck dumb with how absurd the situation is. How did he get behind the counter? I didn't hear the door open. Or see him come through the counter. I scan the storefront. No one. I yell for the baker in case he has a friend or something visiting that lost their kid. He comes over. And like me. Does a double take at the kid and is baffled. Kid starts muttering incoherently. I get him a glass of water and a donut hole and the baker runs out of the store to do a perimeter of the block. I call the non-emergency line and explain I have a little kid with no parents. 
I can't get any information from the boy. Just mumbles I can't make out. Police arrive. Baker comes back says that he can't find anyone else in the streets. The guy from the 24 stroke 7 corner store said he'll keep an eye out. Police try to speak to the kid and also get nothing but mutterings and half-hearted gestures. They take him away. I see them again for their morning coffee and they told me the little guy walked several kilometers from the nearest reservation in the dead of night to my store. He had got into his parents medicine cabinet and just walked out of the house. I'm floored. It must have taken that poor baby hours to get to me. Seeing him behind me like that in the dead of the night still shakes me. Spooked me more than the guy that threw a pot of coffee at me. The woman that tried to stab me with a plastic spoon because I refused to give her a metal one. And the dude that waited around for 4 hours hoping to catch me alone so he could teach me a lesson since I didn't have the flavor of bagel he wanted. I used to work night shift as a care aide in an old folks home. It was already creepy. The home was an old hospital that was converted. Some arsehole kept walking around the courtyard after dark dressed as the grim reaper knocking on doors. It was actually really scary. He ran off and the facility got a security guard for a few weeks. I worked in a residential treatment center for teen girls. One girl with some severe trauma, rape, abuse, came sleepwalking into the room screaming to please untie her while clawing at her wrists. She was begging me to help her because he's torturing me. I sat her down and pulled her bracelets and watch off. She went completely limp then got up and went back to bed. It freaked me out seeing the raw emotion of her trauma since she was always smiling and relatively calm during the day. Another time I was doing my nightly checks and a guy suddenly walked out from behind the door coming at me. I screamed and threw my flashlight at him. It was a smiley face balloon. I was once staying late doing some scenic painting in a college campus theater. It was late. Pitch black dark outside and very quiet in the building. A few of us were up on the stage. Not really talking. Just taking care of business when suddenly I saw out of the corner of my eye something go very quickly by the open door to the lobby. WTF. Then it went by again and I actually saw what it was. A guy with long hair. Wearing pajamas. And no socks or shoes. He was tiptoeing in a very exaggerated way, pulling his knees up very high, and grinning. WTF. It sounds kind of funny but it was creepy as hell. We all made eye contact and one of the other painters was just about to go shut the door when the dude walked right in. He stood there staring at us for a full minute. You could have heard a pin drop. He threw his arms out to the sides dramatically and said, I am your savior. Jesus Christ. No one responded and he eventually walked out. I guess he was hoping to get more of a reaction. The door was promptly shut and locked behind him and security called. They were not impressed. Turns out that he was a patient at some sort of group home nearby and had done this multiple times. I still get creeped out to this day if I'm working in a theater at night though. I worked in an open quarry mine down in Texas. We had this storm where it rained like a mother ducker for hours and hours. Being night shift. 6.30 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. Supervisor. I was in charge of 8 cat 745 haul trucks. 2 cat 390 excavators. 6 cat 980 loaders. 2 d8 dozers. And 1 d9 dozer. It was about 2 a.m. when I had 3 haul trucks get stuck in the bottom of the mine. Just spinning their tires endlessly. It was horrible. Since we're talking about tens of thousands of dollars of production per shift, I had to get permission to shut the mine down from the superintendent and relay that to the supervisors up in the plant that washes drives the material. Frack sand. They wouldn't shut down because I said so. I called him at minimum 13 times within an hour to get him to shut the mine down. Since it was 2am, he never answered which never happened as he always had his phone on. 3-4 of us were soaking wet and covered from head to toe in mud to the point where you couldn't even tell we were wearing neon green high vis safety gear. We got the trucks pulled out of the mine after roughly 3 hours of using a combo of the dozers and loaders and excavators to essentially build a new road from dry materials. The superintendent got in at 6am for the 6.30am to 6.30pm shift, took one look at the mine and shut it down for the day. Turns out his phone charger came unplugged and his phone died in the middle of the night. Never knew I called. Used to work night shift at a middle school. Every night while cleaning out the boys locker room I would hear at least one locker slam shut. 
sometimes more. This creeped me out when I started but after a couple of months I got used to it. One night while cleaning one of the girls locker room. I heard a girl scream. I walked out of the locker room. Even looked outside the building. Didn't see anybody. Before that I worked at the high school. I'd randomly hear doors open and close. Nowadays I work day shift at another school. About a year ago I just got to the building to begin my shift. It was still dark out and I was turning on all the lights. When I walked by the main office I heard what sounded like someone ransacking the place. Papers being tossed. I heard what sounded like a table or file cabinet being dragged. I remember my first thought was, man somebody must have lost something important. Then I clicked. It was 6 in the morning and it was either Thanksgiving or Christmas break meaning there was no school and there shouldn't be anybody in there. Took me a second to work up the courage to go in and check it out. When I did, nobody was there and nothing was out of place. Finally, last month I get a call from dispatch at 3am. The fire alarm was going off and they needed somebody to go turn it off. As soon as I walk in I freak out. The alarm is blaring but what scared me was the strobe light that flashes with the alarm. The building was pitch black except every other second when that strobe lit the halls up. It looked like something straight out of a horror movie where they're looking for the killer. I was half expecting to see someone pop up out of nowhere when the halls lit up. Many many years ago, I worked at a regional radio station in the middle of ducking nowhere, Australia. I was the overnight operator, keep the overnight playlist running, set up for the morning, do all the manual checks for the next day, and jump on the desk if anything funky happens. I spent a lot of time sitting in what was essentially a tin shed in the middle of a paddock, with my dog, shoes off, listening to 50s and 60s music and doing crossword puzzles. Except one night when the roo shooters came through, they spooked the kangaroos in the paddock, and one of them jumped head first through our office window. So there's me, barefoot and half asleep, when the 6 feet tall kangaroo smashes through the glass window, blood and glass everywhere. My dog starts chasing the kangaroo, I'm chasing my dog, and the kangaroo bounds around the office, knocking it off desks in the dark, bleeding everywhere. I ran and opened the studio bay doors, and my dog chased it outside, where, I'm assuming, the poor thing, the kangaroo, was shot. Then I had to call my boss, edit, bandit, the dog, was fine, he lived a long and healthy life. Occasionally being bullied by our pet cockatiel. Pet tax. Second pet tax. Work night shift at a large grocery store. One that wasn't open overnight but had a skeleton crew to work the loads and do prep and clean. I worked near the entrance. Large glass doors but visually blocked off from my vantage point. Around 3am. I hear knocking on the doors. This isn't completely uncalled for. Usually it's someone coming in for an early shift but didn't have a keycard. Sometimes it's someone's food delivery. Or sometimes a customer who thinks we are open despite clearly being closed. I approach the door. It's a man that I don't recognize. Wet from the rain. He looks normal enough. But something about him unnerved me. He had that vibe to him. You know the one. Where it seems like maybe they are on their way to becoming a full blown meth head. But for now they still managed to give the appearance of functionality. He was holding his it together just enough to appear normal. But the edges were definitely shaky. Anyway, without unlocking the door, I announced that the store was closed. He told me that he just needed my help. His car had broken down in the parking lot and he needed a boost. I didn't drive. So I told him I couldn't help him. I should have walked away there. But he was out in the rain and I did legitimately feel bad. So I told him I would see if any one of our few crew did drive. I did find someone who was willing to help. And got the night crew manager involved as well. We went out. Turns out he was parked a bit off from the entrance. In a fairly secluded spot. And he had a lady with him. There was a similar vibe with her. Almost but not exactly normal. It didn't click right away. But I figured they had been hooking up in the car in the parking lot. Maybe left the radio or lights on and drained the battery. To me, that explained the weird unnerving feeling. They either felt ashamed, or guilty, and it was showing through. Anyway, my co-worker goes over to help give them a boost. The manager and I stay out there with him, nearby, watching. The two lovebirds kept peeking over at us a bit uncomfortably. After a few moments, 
the co-worker returns from the car and hurries us back inside. We don't see them drive off, which seems odd. We get inside, lock up again, and then the co-worker thanks us for staying out there with him and not leaving him alone with them. He also caught onto the unnerving air about them, and it made him worried. What worried him more was when it also turned out that there was nothing wrong with their car. Leaving one night from work I was followed by a log truck and it kept going faster and faster until I was at 100 miles per hour. I pulled off as the truck blew past my car rocking it. Thing was there was twisty turns ahead. Couldn't find the truck. Update. No he wasn't experiencing brake failure this was on an uphill which the route is slow and progressively uphill. I'm not on the grapevine or 4th of July pass. It was just hauling ass. They were running bobtail. Usually if a truck loses brakes the driver would probably end huge engine brakes and downshift. Not mine but I used to work at a small hotel and the manager there told me a terrifying night shift story. It was about midnight when she got a call at the front desk from a man. He said that he's with his 8 year old daughter who dances competitively and needed advice on what she should wear. She gave him some basic fashion advice. He asked my manager what about fishnet leggings? Do you think those are too sexy? Then proceeds to talk in graphic detail about how he thinks his own daughter has been trying to seduce him for weeks and how he's starting to enjoy seeing her dance in these cute outfits. Meanwhile my manager is looking through a computer system trying to figure out who this man is so she can call the cops. However the room he was reportedly in was empty. The man ends up hanging the phone up before she could find out where he was truly calling from. A couple months later at around 11pm my manager answers the desk phone. A familiar voice asked her if she could help him pick out an outfit for his daughter's next dance recital. She asked him let me guess you want to know if she should wear fishnet leggings? The man immediately hangs up the phone. More of a very weird event. Sometimes work night shifts. One time was going home around 4am or so. It was pitch dark outside and very quiet. Person on a bike came out of nowhere. Said he remembered me from middle school. Even said the right school name. And rode off. Was running the register at 24 hours supermarket. Stock person comes running in to produce carrying mop handle screaming you mother ducker. Out of sight. He keeps yelling ducker. And smacking handle or something. For like 5 minutes. I am ringing up customers. And freaking out because he was losing his mind. But I am not interested in getting involved in a murder. So I ignore it. Later I find out he was chasing a rat. Did hospital security for about 2 months. It was small hospital out in the sticks so we were responsible for removing patients who had passed from their rooms and transferring into the morgue freezer. We had just brought a dissident to the morgue and right before we were about to transfer them to the freezer their cell phone rang. Granted, pretty tame compared to some stories. But at the time it gave us a decent fright. Work in the winter for me is plowing and snow removal. It was late and I had been out for over 24 hours at this point. Pulled over into a small cul-de-sac with the nearest house being over a 100 ids away so I could let the truck stay on so I could stay warm. Six wheel Mac things loud. As I'm nodding off, there was a very loud bang and it felt like someone then pulled on my driver side door handle. Luckily I always lock my truck doors. I immediately threw on every strobe rear headlight and started looking around and I saw absolutely nothing it scared the it out of me. Needless to say I never sleep anywhere other than lit parking lots now. For a change of pace here's a nice one. I was taking my break outside and a little mouse came up to me so I gave him a bit of pot noodle and he sat on the floor next to me munching away on it. I was working the Christmas Eve night shift in my local emergency department. The clock struck 4am on Christmas morning and the emergency buzzer sounded. A 74 year old male patient had gone into a sudden cardiac arrest. The buzzer wasn't working properly so we couldn't locate where exactly in the department it was coming from. Once we finally figured it out, we got in there and I took over chest compressions. A team of anesthetists, nurses, doctors and 20 minutes later. We managed to get him back for just long enough for his family to come and say goodbye to him. What a ritty Christmas. Working third shift security at a condo. And a mother left the bathroom to check on their mac and cheese. Her two year old drowned in the tub. Once the police were done. My boss called me and told me I had to go talk to the family. 
and find out what happened even though we knew from the police telling us. My daughter was about 2 at the time. It broke my heart to even hear the story from the guy I relieved. And then I had to go ask the family to tell some Dumas rent a cop about it as well. Worked at a distress center almost 10 years ago. Was on the 12am to 6am shift. Got about 2 phone calls each hour of the shift from the same guy saying that he's tied up in a room. His balls are tied up with leather straps. And his wife is getting banged by 5 giant black guys in the other room. Asked him each time if he's in distress and he says no every time. Kept telling him if he's not in distress then he shouldn't be calling and let him go. I just can't believe he was up from 12 to 6 a.m. to make those calls. My buddy and I were in the guard shack on an important entry point, like 100% ID checks. Can't be expired. Go to double check against a list put out even if the IDs are valid so if you're not on the list your ID doesn't mean it. It's around 3 a.m. and we're watching creepy YouTube videos during the time that nobody is coming through. He looks up and shouts what the duck. I look up and scream like a little girl and nearly jump out of my chair. Dollar store Jason Momoa was just face pressed against the glass. Grinning and once he scared the it out of us he laughed and walked in. Dude was as big as Jason Momoa and pretty similar looking. I mean dollar store version of him. 10 minutes later after we calmed down I looked at him and asked wait did he even show an ID? No. No he did not Lomeo. I worked night shift at a group home for disabled adults. It was a pretty chill job. Generally. I showed up for work at 9pm. Finished up some household chores. Did the dishes. Swept and mopped the floors. Took out the trash. Folded some laundry. Stuff like that. And then watched TV with one of the clients until he was ready for bed. After I helped the aforementioned client into bed. I slept on the couch until about 7am when it was time to get them up. Give them their meds. And make them breakfast. Then I was done at 9am and had the day to myself. It would have been the perfect job if one of the clients didn't hate me. I guess I looked like a relative that abused him or something. But he was an alcoholic and usually passed out drunk by the time I got there and wasn't a morning person for the same reason. So I didn't really have to deal with him much. Then one night was a perfect storm of events. The alcoholic client was still up when I arrived for my shift. Which was a bit of a bummer since he swore at me and called me names. But I helped him make a snack and he went to bed after eating. The next thing I know, there are EMTs knocking on the door. The client had called them because he was in pain. The EMTs assessed him and stated that they didn't see a reason to bring him to the hospital since the pain was caused by a chronic condition. But he demanded to be taken anyway. So they loaded him up into the ambulance and went. I couldn't go with him because I was working alone and had two other, much less independent clients to look after. The managers that were normally on call were away at a conference. So I called my immediate supervisor, who was acting on call, to inform her of what happened. My supervisor's husband was at work and she was home alone with her young children. So she couldn't go to the hospital. She didn't want to call someone in either. So the plan was that the client would have to stay at the hospital overnight and she would pick him up in the morning. It wasn't an emergency. So the nurses at our small town hospital probably wouldn't call in the doctor and the client likely wouldn't be seen until the doctor came in to do rounds at about 4 to 5 a.m. So it should have been fine. About an hour later. I got a call from the ER nurses with an ultimatum. Come pick up the client right now or they're calling the cops because he is causing a disturbance. Awesome. I got the client on the phone and explained that I was trying to find him a way home. But he had to calm down in the meantime. I told the nurses I would call them back as soon as I figured something out. I called every taxi in the phone book. But of course none of them were running since it was a week night and the bars had already closed for the night. I was weighing getting into my car and picking him up myself since the other clients were in bed and I would only be gone like 20 minutes tops when I had an epiphany. Some kid was trying to start his own Uber knockoff in my town. I got the kid on the phone and he agreed to pick up the client from the hospital. He demanded an absurd amount of money for the service. But whatever. I was desperate. I called the nurses at the hospital and explained the updated plan. But the client had calmed down since their last call and they were waiting on some tests to come back. Ducking awesome. Girls, thanks for letting me know. Great ducking teamwork. The nurses assured me they'd be quick and the kid agreed to wait at the hospital until the client was done. So crisis averted, I guess.
Then I had to figure out how to pay the kid for picking up the client. The client had no money and a ducking course. The petty emergency cash box was empty. All I had on me was my debit card and there was no way this kid had a debit machine on him. So I did the best thing I could think of. I borrowed the money from another client and when my replacement came in the next morning, I went straight to the bank, withdrew the same amount of money I had borrowed, and paid back the other client immediately. Is it against the rules? Yup. But what other choice did I have besides letting a client get dragged off to the drunk tank on my watch? Shift from hell over. Right? Nope. A month later, I got called into a manager's office and written up for borrowing money from the other client. Honestly, I was probably fine with the write-up since I did break the rules. But what really pissed me off was the insinuation that I stole from the client I borrowed the money from and that the company was doing me a big favor by not firing me. The company. The managers. My supervisor. No one would accept any responsibility for the situation they put me in. They just said I handled the situation wrong and when I asked how I should have handled it, they said not like that. So I gave my notice. Duck em all. Many years ago I briefly had a job that started at 3.30am. The job itself was very boring. But the commute was wild. The world is at its weirdest in the very early morning. Road hazards haven't been called in yet. So one day I pulled off the freeway and discovered that the off ramp was completely flooded. Deep enough that I have no idea how my car didn't stall. But the most interesting discovery was that if law enforcement has to raid a home, they do it around 3 or 4 in the morning because that's the best chance of everyone being peacefully asleep. One day I was nearly to work when I noticed something off ahead of me. I slowed down and came up to a massive police blockade. Squad cars everywhere and absolutely crawling with heavily armed officers. But all in absolute silence. They silently waved me down a side street. Just a creepy, unsettling experience. Used to work nights at a Home Depot. There was one time where for a week or so our store stayed open 24 hours. For the most part this wasn't really a problem. Typically nobody comes shopping for home improvement items at 2 in the morning, except that one couple that came looking for marble countertops at 1.30 in the morning and the woman was wearing a nice dress. I guess there was also that one young lady who came looking for a toilet paper road holder a little after midnight. I had just gotten off my first break, and she was wearing jorts and a one of those white with black belt stereotypical karate outfits. She was oddly specific about which roll holder to get. 2. But the real story lies within the insulation. It was nearing 3 in the morning and me and another guy were stocking insulation, as well as fixing the bays and some such maintenance. A bunch of big R30s had fallen in their bay and while I was sorting through them a duck and hand came out of the mess and grabbed my arm. I lost my mind enough for not only the guy I was working with to freak out but also for my boss, who was across the store, to come check out the commotion. Turns out a homeless drunkard had come into the store at some point, and I can only assume before the night crew showed up, and had made a nest in the insulation where he fell asleep. The dude was in bad shape. Too. Like. Far gone into whatever inebriation that we had to call the police to remove him. I was always a little more cautious around the insulation after that. For at least the time the store stayed open 24 hours. I was closing supervisor at a grocery store and someone managed to it between the bathroom and the exit doors at 8.59. We close at 9 o'clock. You'd think oh there's little it on the floor surely people will walk around it no instead they continue to plow through it so now there's it on multiple grocery carts. The exit is scattered with fesses. There's it on people's shoes undoubtedly. And there's it in the parking lot. Luckily for me my less squeamish supervisor working with me that closing night volunteered to mop up the exit and bathroom which to our surprise had also been it on. For the record human it makes me immediately gag and vomit when I get a whiff of it so I ended up puking in the trash next to the it exit. TLDR. Saw on camera as a homeless man fall about 50 feet landing on his feet. Shattering his ankles and wrists. Survives and is taken to the hospital. Fun coincidence at the end. I worked overnight security at a convention center for a few years. One night at like 2am I was on cameras chit chatting with another officer who was manned at what we called base. I had two other guys and my supervisor out on patrol. I saw a homeless dude go up our outdoor elevator to a public terrace and was keeping an eye on him. No big deal. 
he goes to a corner just out of reach of our cameras. A corner known to us for people to usually catch a quick nap in. I call on the radio to our nearest patrol officer, whom was also patrolling with my supervisor, that this guy was hanging out here doing whatever. They casually start walking towards the area, upon their arrival to the scene. Next thing I know on another camera directly below this terrace corner, like 50 feet below, also right outside our office, I see a body drop straight down and land on their legs, collapsing to the ground. I quickly stand up from my chair and am panicking holy it holy it holy it. I grab the first aid kit and run out of the office to go outside. My other officer on base jumps on the phone and calls 911. My supervisor says base. Call 911. We're already on it. I'm the first one there and this homeless man was writhing in pain. Shattered bones protruding from his ankles. Bleeding from the mouth. Trying to mumble what happened. He manages to roll over and I see his hands are also ducked up. More bones protruding from his wrists. I don't dare touch him and I doubted my first aid kit would have helped at all. My supervisor and other officer come running down the stairs to the scene. Apparently when they arrived to the original scene on the terrace in my camera's blind spot, the guy was sitting on the ledge with the 50 foot drop directly below him. My supervisor yells hey get down from there. And the homeless dude just lifts himself up and drops. Not a word spoken. First responders arrive and take him to the hospital. I of course had to write the report and review the video of the incident. A cop comes an hour later and shares his condition that he survived but will most likely never walk again. No major internal organ damage. Now for the major coincidence. A few days later I get a new roommate. Who brings his girlfriend over. We're all hanging out. Talking. Drinking. I share that I work security at so and so and the new roommate's girlfriend says oh didn't you guys just have a homeless man fall off your terrace and almost die? WTF. How'd she know that? There was no media coverage. She wasn't there. Apparently she was the godmother of his children. Best friends with the mother. She shares that he was a homeless alcoholic junkie that constantly fought with the police and was in and out of jail multiple times. She got the call that he attempted suicide and rushed with the mother to the hospital to see him. She shared his conditions with me and that he was in critical condition but expected to survive. Her and my roommate shortly broke up and I never saw her again. Oh man. I hate recalling this story. I work night shift at a rehab facility. We have a protected gate with a camera looking down from above and one of those doorbell cameras. In the office. The camera monitor is on one wall and the doorbell monitor is on another. I was doing some paperwork and see this guy walk past. Stop for a few seconds. Then slowly turned around. Walk back and stared up at the camera. And he kept staring. The facility is in a rough neighborhood so I'm fairly used to folks hanging out around the gate and usually ignore it. But the way he was staring was off-putting. Like, his eyes and expression were hollow and dead. Almost as if he were in deep thought about something horrible. I was pretty sure he was onked on synthetics. I used the intercom to see if he was okay but he just kept staring directly at the camera. We have a rule. If it's not hurt or trying to come through the fence, just let it be. No sense in engaging needlessly with somebody potentially hostile or ducking with the locals. Y'all. He stood there and stared at that camera for 2 hours. That same dead eyed expression staring right at me. I did a round and came back to find him gone. Which only creeped me out more.